everyone, and welcome to DTV InfoBrew. Delighted to have you, and I'm joined by today by Shabir Rupani, uh, Senior Partner, Solutions Architect at AWS, and Devin Samant, who leads the, it's the Global Cloud Center of Excellence here at InfoStretch. Both welcome on, welcome for the conversation. Thank you, Avdi. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I, your background, I think, in application infrastructure architecture, I and mean, you've got a lot of focusing background in terms of migrating and modernizing, which is right on point for what a lot of people are, are asking is how to migrate, uh, how to migrate and modernize their applications. And Devin, you know, your experience the last 18 years about accelerating digital, I think, really speaks to, to, to people's needs. Mm -hmm. So you know, first of all, I wanted to look at this whole issue of cloud migration. Uh, everyone talks about, well, we'll just take everything and move on over to the cloud. Uh, where, is, where are things today? What kind of things have been moved? What are the obstacles? Why isn't it all done yet? Yeah, so I'll take the first stab at this. So, so according to some research, right, uh, research I recently read about from GCN.com, this is just 40% of the workloads run in cloud. So there's still a lot of workload that's not running in cloud. Now, what they're missing out on is the benefits of the cloud, right? First thing is the cost savings. Uh, companies can realize cost savings with the cloud and they are missing out on that. You know, there's a lot of capital that people, uh, the companies have to put up to maintain and manage the data centers with cloud. You just pay for what you use, right? So pay as you go. So they're missing out, out on that. Plus, you know, it makes the teams agile, right? You, you uh, traditionally, when you want to work on a new project, uh, takes you a couple months to procure the infrastructure, right? With the cloud, you could just start moving on from day one. So, so there's a lot of infrastructure that is still running on prem, which is missing out on all of these uh, benefits that cloud brings brings to the table. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Uh, you know, yes, and that is what we are seeing in our client uh, uh, ecosystem also, right? In a sense, and you know, I, I don't know whether I should, I should say thanks to pandemics or not, but you know, that has really uh, sort of created an uptick in the digital transformation journeys, and cloud is always at the center of that, right? Uh, you know, there are, there are a lot of uh, movement towards cloud. Uh, you know, there is a realization that cloud is the way to go. Uh, whether it is a you know a, a, a restaurant chain that we are working in uh, in in southeast or or even the big enterprises uh, right uh, the, wherever the the workloads were not running on cloud you know they uh, had that uh, challenges when the pandemic hit and it, there is a realization that you know whatever was not in cloud is not the future and hence we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, you know, activity towards the cloud migration. And this would be the right time for uh, all of us to discuss those things and take it forward, really. So what are, what are the challenges sometimes, you know, because, you know, not everything in the end should be in the cloud. It's not 100%. And yeah. so one of the things that people should not, you know, should be thinking about and why, and how do they draw those lines and how do they de-risk, the other thing is how do they de-risk it? Because everyone knows that, you know, as they say, let, let sleeping dogs lie. And I think in many cases, you know, let working code leave, leave it alone. Yeah, that's true. I, I can take that, right? In a sense, and this is what, you know, we have been practicing, right? And I, I, that is why I call, I call this whole practice as a cloud done right, right? Because when, when you move to cloud, one thing that you need to have a good understanding of is, is your workload. Um, understand your workload better, assess it, and uh, use you use the experts there, right? People who have been there, done that, you know, we, we have been practicing that for a long time. You know, we are partnering with, uh, you know, likes of Shabir here who bring a lot of that, that knowledge on how to assess your, uh, your workload, find out uh, the, the right R that, that is uh, needed for you, right? Whether your, um, your workload needs to be re-hosting or, uh, or refactoring or, or for, in some cases, just retain, okay, or replace, right? Something like that. We have to really come up with the right strategy for every workload that that you have, and that is what we really, uh, you know, encourage uh, the organizations to do. Understand your workload, define the strategy, right? That that you're going to adopt, and then plan for that strategy for that particular workload, right? You always have to balance it out. You know, what is what is the gain that you're going to have? Right? Is it a high gain you know, and, and, and low effort kind of a thing or a high gain, high effort kind of a thing? 
that understanding that understanding is very important when you plan for uh, migration not every every workload is meant for cloud you know, let's accept it right and there are going to be these challenges and that is where a trusted partner like us and and our partnership with aws would really come handy in such cases I have to say, I really love the 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 concept of the six R's of rehost, replatform, repurchase, refactor, retire, and retain, mm -hmm. because it pretty much covers the the waterfront. And oh, yes. <laughs> there for literally every app. You say to yourself, you know, which one of these fits, and then on the other hand, then prioritize to say which one's going to have the biggest impact by going to the cloud. Sure. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, uh, and that enables you to do an intelligent roadmap and. How have you seen that work? Because in one of the challenges, I think a lot of the viewers is, you know, the, the technology teams often see the value of cloud, but, you know, remarkably, it's the finance team that releases funds to, to start to do redevelopment. So how do you how do you de-risk things for the executive team and how do you show the, the, the financial recovery of, of all of this work to the finance team? At AWS, we have seen a lot of migrations done, right? We have actually helped a lot of customers migrate to the cloud. We have a streamlined process of migration, right? With the three different phases, assess, mobilize, and migrate and modernize. So during the assess phase is where, uh, you know, you come in and do all your, uh, you know, basically fact gathering and looking for your cloud readiness. We do, we do uh, you know, a migration readiness assessment which is basically giving you that whole picture of where your your infrastructure and your company stands uh, and where do you want to be in the future and how you would get there, right? So it, it all depends on on the, the outcome of that assessment and the path that you will take uh, going forward. And uh, just to add to that, right, in the sense of migration, so, you know, uh, we, we follow the same model that, uh, you know, uh, Shabir just called out, right, and, but uh, the main part, the later part, right, where uh, any cloud strategy uh, is not about just migrating to that, but then after that, evolving that strategy, uh, maintaining those, those digital assets that you have migrated, on cloud, uh, right? That is very important, right? And since it's, it's it's important that the true ROI is 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 mapped over a period of time, and that is where really the money guys, if you may, right? They are, they are interested in, right? Why should I take it to cloud, and how it is going to sort of uh, you know uh, help me in in this investment, right? Over a period of time, and that's where you know we can we can actually work on specific workloads with with our clients and and. and probably you know can give that kind of entire map of of short term long term and how those gains can be achieved for, by moving the workloads uh, on cloud one of the things that i took away from conversations when we talked in the past is having some tools like analyzers so it, it there's a there's an interview process but there's also a, a technical assessment process True. and then there's also a comparables process of right. you know your workloads you know these are the similar cases and these are the the, the known pitfalls with that kind of a workload moving to the cloud. Is that the right way to think about it? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you know, uh, AWS has, uh, you know, uh, tools that are available, right, to, to assess your workload, to identify your, your workload, and then to migrate that workload, right? So there are, there are, there are services available there. You know, uh, whether it's a database migration service, server migration service, we, we have those things, right? We have discovery tools that are available to understand your, your uh, workload. So there are, those are AWS services available. And then on top of that, we also have done some uh, additional work given, given the, our experience in, in this area, right? Uh, we have a cloud maturity model, which really puts you in a, in a sort of a quadrant system, if you may, which gives you an idea of where you really stand from uh, readiness, uh, from adopting the cloud and where you need to go, what your nirvana state would look like. And as, as I've been saying, and I think you also mentioned every, right? Uh, there are pitfalls, right? And since not everything is, is meant for every organization. So what is right for your organization? How to get from point A to point B needs to be evaluated and mapped. And that is where uh, these, these cloud assessment tools can come in. And once you have done that, right, effort estimation is another thing because this is what we have seen in in uh, in our practice that uh, you know many uh, you know sort of workloads that just become that project becomes just too big, right, for for you to manage to 
So quantifying your efforts, like how many objects you are moving, how many server workloads that you're moving, even if a database, a simple things like databases, stored procedures, functions, triggers, when you're moving them, you know, what is that you're moving? How much is going to uh, be done by an automated process? How much manual intervention is needed? Creating right t-shirt sizing and all those things is very important. Quantifying your efforts and planning for that, that, uh, uh, that, uh, a volume is is an essential part of it, and when when you plan well, the migration becomes a seamless activity. One thing I've heard it, it talked about in the past is all concept of well architected and a well architected review. I think it'd be worthwhile. It'd be interesting to talk to. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we have uh, you know over the years um, with the experience that we have with working with customers, we've developed a framework, and it's called a well-architected framework, right? So it, it's based on uh, you know all the best practices that we've seen, and we've documented that and converted that into you know a framework of uh, you know tools, uh, data, as well as uh, you know best practices that customers can follow. Now with the ever-changing world of AWS, you have new services coming in, you have uh, new products uh, you know, uh, getting launched and new ways of doing the same things that you were doing, right? So it, it's the process of uh, you know, checking where you are with respect to the best practice and applying them to, to make your uh, application and your infrastructure more efficient. One question that comes up as cloud becomes more mainstream, people are working on more and more critical apps. How do you, what tools and approaches are there to give people confidence that they aren't going to cause a catastrophe as they move critical processes to the cloud? Yeah, so when people are considering a technology move, right, a move to cloud or changing something or the way it's done, uh, and you're not sure about it, you can I mean, we have developed programs for it. So like we can work with the, our APN partners like InfoStretch and do what we call as immersion day, which is a hands-on learning experience where the partner comes in uh, and does a hands-on learning experience for your team with labs and workshop. And then after that, if it comes out to be an idea that you could go to a POC stage, AWS has a process where you could actually do a POC and AWS would fund a part of uh, your spend on the POC. And you know, once you have that, and if you're thinking of migrating that workload, and if it is a workload that qualifies for our MAP program, there are ways for AWS uh, to fund you uh, for that migration or moving that particular workload to the cloud as well. Yeah, that's uh, thank, thanks for asking that question. Actually, uh, you know, that is where you know, our partnership really comes very handy to make these decisions really risk free, right? Uh, whether it is uh, you know, an uh, immersion day uh, activity or you know, really doing some experimentation, creating a POC and sort of having that trusted uh, people, you know, like like Shabir, myself, and, and our teams to be with you, right? That would really help making that decision more more easy for you, uh, you know, backed with back some data and backed with some uh, some support, really. So yeah, that's what I would say. You know, definitely, uh, you know, we, we we should be able to do it. Well, thank you. I think this is a, that's a key key uh, question, and thank you for the clarity in terms of how. Uh, how people can make progress without exposing themselves to unnecessary risk. Sure. Well, you know, thank you, uh, thank you both for joining us today. This has really been good, and I think you've given people a lot to think about. And uh, and for their viewers, um, I'd like to say, InfoStretch is a proud sponsor of AWS Reinvent coming up in just a couple of weeks. Uh, so join us uh, November 29th to December 3rd in uh, beautiful Las Vegas, where you can talk to both of these gentlemen in, in person. And uh, we really can show where, where, where we will be showing how InfoStretch does cloud right. So visit the link in the description to get more information about how to book a meeting. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. And Shabir and Devin, look forward to continuing our conversation about cloud. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks for hosting us. Yeah, thanks for having me.